Up next, a review of the Escalation expansion for the deck building game Eminent Domain. Eminent Domain Escalation was designed by Seth Jaffe, or Haffy, I'm not sure how the J's pronounce that particular one. Features art by Gavin Brown, Eric J. Carter, and Ryan Johnson. Thank you all for having nice, easy to pronounce names. It was published by Tasty Minstrel Games in 2014. I was fortunate enough to pick up a review copy from The Undead Viking at the Tasty Minstrel Games booth at Origins 2019 this year. No, no other compensation was provided for this review. The best way to see what you get in this expansion is to watch our unboxing video on YouTube. For those who haven't seen it yet, and that should be everyone because it hasn't actually come out yet. <laughs> Wasn't, isn't the Eminent Domain one live? Uh, yeah, no. it's been out forever. Is that, oh, is that what the one's out forever? Yeah, okay. yeah, it's been out there like a long time. Oh, sorry, there's, there's another the one that I'm thinking of that's not then. Um, oh, no, it's out there. I linked to it. Okay, the perfect. Never mind. That. Work. Carry on. Oh, no, it's For those of you who there. haven't seen it yet, what do you get in the box? All right. First off, it's a very small but solid box. I don't know how to describe it, but like the cardboard's nice. It's a nice solid box for something that's tiny as it is that fits actually inside the base box with everything else, which I dig. I actually really appreciate that. I can keep it all together. And not only that, I can keep the eminent domain stuff or the escalation stuff separate from the rest of the stuff. So that's cool. Uh, inside the box, you got a rule book, uh, a TMG catalog, two decks of cards, a rather large sticker, and three punch boards. The instructions themselves are rather thick, actually, for an expansion, 19 pages. Uh, that glossy paper material, but a lot of those 19 pages are reference pages for the new cards, because it's the type of thing where you may need to look up exactly, like, you know, the card wording isn't perfect, so you look it up in the rule book. My only complaint here is one you'll hear me make on every unboxing video I do, I'll either thank the publisher or, or bemoan them, and that is presenting me with white text over a dark Starfield background. As my eyes get older, I got to say, I love black text on white. Please do not give me white on dark. Yeah, that, that's a big deal for you. Personally, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and it's Horizons Extermination is the, the what I keep thinking of. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's the one this that's, year. No, yeah, we yeah. haven't done that one yet. Haven't I haven't opened well, I've opened it, but I haven't played <laughs> that yet. No, this is, this is Escalation, not yep. Extermination. No, this one's live. Um, deck of cards or sorry, punch boards. Punch boards have a whole set of new starting worlds. Uh, they don't replace the originals. You use them in addition, as well as some new reference cards because the way fleets have changed. Fleets are used has changed, and they, they explain it. Uh, these are nice, thick. Uh, the important thing is they perfectly match the quality of the original game. And that's actually a big deal. Uh, one thing I was noticing when we had the Monster Box of Monsters open the other day, uh, week, um, uh, which I'll actually talk about later, is... Uh, the the card backs aren't the same. Yeah, they're sl Ouch. they're different enough, and the yeah. size is actually slightly yeah. different. So Ooh, it's size too. I mean, it's a very it's a very slight difference, but you know which you know which expansion when, or which set of cards you've got in your hands, even just yeah. by holding your deck. Yeah, that stinks. And, and in this case, I, I noted the punch cards are are the same. the The two decks of cards are also of the same quality as the original game, no change in them, no change in color. You literally can't tell them apart, except maybe if you played your original copy a lot and don't sleeve your cards like me, you might notice they're not as worn. Like, that's a kind of common problem. Personally, I hadn't played the original game enough to get them to that, you know, revised magic card level at that point. Um, new cards include new worlds, new technologies, as well as some new role cards, uh, but not new roles, just additional roles. And then I really think thick, significant deck of what are called strategy cards. So this, and this is a new, the strategy cards are a whole new concept? Yeah, yeah, I'll get into exactly what you get with it in a bit, but yeah, it's, that's, that's the biggest, one of the biggest additions. Now the sticker is kind of unique. So the sticker is actually an errata for the game board. Now this game doesn't have a big game board, it's just a place to put the cards basically, but two of the roles, when the pile is exhausted, actually change how they work. And that's supposed to be on the board printed, so you know that. Now, the sticker goes on top of those two rolls, and my God, lining it up is not easy. Uh, one thing to note, well, to make it look perfect, it depends if you care that much. I personally care, and, trying to, and it has a little grid on it, and oh, it was a pain to line up. What's interesting I found out is that later printings of the base game have this fix. So if you do pick this up, you might want to check to see if your board already matches your sticker. Because that's what happened to me is I spent forever trying to perfectly line it up and then realized that I had the later printing anyway and shouldn't have bothered with the sticker. Sure. 
All right, so on to what you actually, what this adds to eminent domain. I'll get to the scenarios in a bit because the this expansion actually does three different things that you can mix and match. You could use all three things or you could use one of the three things or you can use two or whatever. You can mix and match it. And the first is really simple. You can play with five players. What I like about this is the components for switching it to five players are color-coded, like brightly color-coded. If you check out the blog post, you can see it, like bright blue lines on the cards. And it easily tells you, like, oh, five players, throw this stuff in or take that out. That's always nice, because sometimes going through and shuffling, I know a lot of these games, it's like, oh, how many the players you play with? Tiny. You look for this little tiny number yes. or icon in the bottom corner of uh, a, a textured background yes. color. It's like, well, OK, well, the three of us are now going to take the next half hour to sort through the deck of cards. Yeah, just decide to play Terraforming Mars without Corporate Wars once or to pull out the <laughs> Venus expansion. Or, and that's not even the worst. I've, I've definitely seen worse. Now, next, we have the scenarios that we talked about earlier. Um, these add an asymmetric element to the game. Uh, basically, turns out Eminent Domain into an asymmetric game right from the start. Start of the game, you're going to get a scenario card, and then that tells you which your starting hand is, which roles you're going to start with in your hand. And they're going to give you different starting worlds. So it's going to tell you you're going to pick one from the originals or you're going to start with a random metallic world. And it'll even give you some starting technologies, which is actually a big change to the game because it kind of jumps you to the mid game instead of having to play up that build up at the beginning. That's a nice little step. Now, the final thing Escalation adds are new technologies, worlds, and core rule changes. Now, this is the, the significant thing. The biggest rule changes in how fleets work in the game. These fleet rules are tied to the new technologies and world cards. Players can now use fleets instead of research to pay for some of the technologies, and then certain worlds now can only be settled by certain sizes of ships. Now, what this basically does is changes the warfare role from the base game, basically making it more important, more useful, more versatile, and makes it a much more viable strategy while reducing the power of the research power. Which is really what was needed, because I don't think uh, just making that warfare role viable was enough to overcome the fact that researching could could really win the game for you. Yeah, I, I, I agree somewhat. Now, when Escalation came out, there was a ton of buzz, a lot of people talking about how this expansion fixed eminent domain. And I got to admit, I don't completely agree at least in regards to the, the, the new warfare rules, the, the rule changes, because I, I just found the base game work great. And I never actually found warfare that underpowered or research that overpowered, except when players were learning the game. Once everyone knew what was going on, it was different. Yes, research is very strong, but if all the players know research is very strong and that those what those stage three research cards can do, Everyone can then play to make sure the players don't get those overpowered combos and make sure you can cut off the other players. And Warfare, I found actually perfectly valid, but it's one you couldn't do on its own. You couldn't just do Warfare. And once you knew that, and everyone else at the table knew that, and everyone was at the same experience level, that was just playing eminent domain. Yeah, you can't just do Warfare. It's just part of the game. Personally, I didn't find it was something broken or any way that needed, anything that needed to be fixed. Sure. Now, that said, I do like the rule changes. So I'm not saying Escalation's garbage because it didn't fix the game. No, I like the changes. It changes the feel of the game enough to make it feel like you've changed it, right? Without changing it too much where you feel like you're playing a different game, which I've... the My classic example for that is Settlers of Catan and Cities and Knights of Catan. To me, those are two totally separate games. You still play like you're playing Eminent Domain. Now, I found the biggest impact on gameplay didn't come from the changes to Warfare, rather the new diversified technologies that required more than one type of world. Because in the base game, to get a technology, you needed to stick to one type of planet. Now there was a valid way to, to diversify, to not just get the one thing. And there's one particular technology that it's not just one card, there's one for every different planet type called Double Time. I found the double time card and the ability to diversify over having to specialize in a planet changed the game way more than the fact that you could now build up your fleets and you can now use ships to take technology. Sure. Now, I would go so far to say the game is better with these rules, but I don't think it's like groundbreaking. It fixes the game. Don't play eminent domain without it. But now that you have it, would you take it out? 
See, I have. I've actually done both, I, especially when I'm teaching new players. So one of the things I didn't get into this in the detail in the review, and we talked about it whenever we talked about playing Eminent Domain, is this is a game that rewards system mastery. And your first three games of Eminent Domain are going to be nothing like your sixth game of Eminent Domain. Actually, your third game is probably going to be nothing <laughs> like your first. Like, there is a definite learning curve. And knowing what cards are out there and knowing what the, the technologies do and knowing which technologies to go for and which technologies to go for because someone else is doing something and how to react to it. And Escalation, because it has especially more technologies and more worlds and more options, I would much rather teach the game with just the base rules. But even with experienced players, the base game's a little simpler and a little quicker, especially at three players. So if I have less time, I might pull it out. Sure. Now, regarding the addition of a fifth player, I, I personally think this is the least useful thing in the box. Now, it's great. Well, we talked about it before that, yeah, okay, you know what? An extra person showed up tonight or, you know what? Our six-player game's canceled. We can at least play Eminent Domain. I personally think there's much better five-player games out there. We just had a whole bunch of them talked about in our feedback session of tonight's show. Um, I think even with Escalation, this game is almost a play it at three player only game. Like it is definitely best at three players. I would probably turn down a game at five players unless someone begged me and find something else to play when I'm at five. Interesting. And I was just, just checking real quickly. They don't have this expansion on uh, Board Game Arena, it looks like. Oh, well, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. We haven't played it. We were playing this on Board Game Arena, but that's you need to play this yeah, real it's time. Yeah, real time is, is the way to do it. Because there's just too much to think about to, to come back two days later. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the final part, of course, is that scenario system I mentioned, and this is my favorite part, which would be no one's surprise. Everyone listening to this podcast should know by now that I love asymmetry in my games. I love a game where everyone starts with something different and has to adopt their play based on what those differences are. And that is exactly what Escalation adds to Eminent Domain. Yeah, I mean, we all, everyone who listens to the show is, is, is well aware. Yes, <laughs> I think so. I, 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 yes. Now, overall, I may disagree that es Escalation is must have that fixes Eminent Domain. I do think there's a lot to like here. Uh, if you dig Eminent Domain and don't own this, I do recommend picking it up. Uh, to me, it's almost a, like, just do it. There's there's no reason not to. Uh, though you might be like me and still enjoy the base game and sometimes pull out all the fancy new stuff and play with just the original. Fair enough. And uh, just uh, to note that BGG does list, uh, it still has best three with the expansion or without. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a three-player game, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. No, the really three-player extended game specifically, because there's two ways to play three-player. All right, well, for a somewhat more in-depth look at eminent, eminent, eminent domain escalation, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on reviews. Yeah, there's quite a bit more detail over there. I cut this one down quite a bit just to give everyone the brief overview. I get into a little bit more detail about what the actual changes are and what some of the fleet changes are. Also, if you want to see this expansion in action, we do have an actual play. Uh, one of the nights where one of our players canceled on Gloomhaven, we decided to play something else and recorded a three-player game with Tori and Kat. You can find that over at youtube.com slash tabletop bellhop. Uh, just look at our tabletop game actual play playlist and you'll find it in there 